What's up guys, Kevin Cage back with another XRP update. In this video, I want to explain why I believe XRP, the digital asset, will impact billions of lives. Not just the 1.7 billion people considered in the unbanked population, but also the underbanked in the rest of the entire world. Well, why am I so excited? Because XRP is still at 50 cents, getting a nice little push up here and we're rising from the dead from 50 cents yet again, up 6% on fiat leak. It's because we know that this digital asset specifically is one of the very few that is servicing live customers working with live financial institutions in the real world today, in the world of blockchain, which is largely a 99% speculative market. Yeah, big deal. I know we've only done $2 billion in actual transaction flows for these corporates and financial institutions. But why am I excited? Because I am seeing expanded corridors. I am seeing liquidity growing amidst the current SEC allegations right now. And guess what? Ripple, per a video a few days ago, put out new projections of on-demand liquidity volume to grow to $750 billion. 750 billion versus what we've already serviced about 2.4 billion in notional value is that a lot of upside to me it is and i cannot wait until we're doing that type of volume per month per you know per day per year what do you think how, like how liquid the asset xrp would be as the famous quote goes in a variety of currencies for that matter liquidity begets liquidity with all of us holding it with a lot a lot of people holding it with even lending um, ecosystems being built for xrp specifically or collateralizing xrp with the flare networks the demand can really ramp up ramp up a lot faster than we think so let's go over a few things, guys. I hope you stick around and enjoy. Fiat Leak, for any newcomers in the top left, you can go to this website, fiatleak.com. This is, and then slash XRP if you want to see XRP and you see, see a variety of currencies. Notice Brazilian Real and all of these. Another website that I really like to use is actually called, and it's for on-demand liquidity tracking, is Utility Scan. So you can visit this website at utility-scan.com. Now, what's cool about this? Well, you can actually see any live flows for XRP volume that are being used by on-demand liquidity, which is specifically the software of RippleNet that Ripple uses. We can see a variety of currencies, the Philippine peso, of course, an expanded corridor in Southeast Asia, the Mexican peso with the euro. We have the Australian dollar and a variety of other currencies that are expected to grow. We can see the volume. This is something that is in a very, very early stage. The upside is very, very high. And it's actually comical to me because when you connect all these dots and you even just follow the fundamentals and you are extremely conservative, you see the opportunity at play here. This is an entirely new asset class. XRP is the first digital asset to go outside of even proof of work as a consensus mechanism. And we're talking, and it's gonna be 10 years soon. And that is just, you know, crazy to consider i mean yes yeah we could say you know eight or seven years we've been going strong but that's a lot further than most assets today we had news that xns another digital asset was disappearing entirely and it was you know already ranked one of those micro caps in the top what 2000 top you know 1000 i don't really play with anything like that could you make phenomenal returns Yes, but for me, you know, the digital asset space is already risky enough. And first rule of investing for me, kind of like first rule of Fight Club, is make sure that you retain your original investment. So I've been following that. Of course, it's easy to make money and easy to trade right now when these assets are going up left and right, but it's not always going to be like that. Now, ideally, even in yesterday's video, we do know and do expect long term this market to surpass trillions and trillions and trillions. And we saw Tether just keeps printing. And I don't want to say that's a good thing, but it also excites me for the potential. Um, when they stop printing, yes, it usually is preceded by a huge pullback or dip and dump, so I'm not going to ignore that. But we can see the global market cap, at least right now, is 1.57. Let's see if it's going down or up currently. Yep, 1.5. So still over 1.5 trillion. And I'm sorry if I keep saying billion for some reason. 1.5 trillion dollars in this global market cap. And Tether is showing no signs of stopping. You can go to a variety of websites like Whale Alert and watch those tracking. Um, sometimes they're just transfers. Sometimes they're actually minting more assets, printing out of thin air. And yeah, it can be uh, pretty exciting. 2,000 BT, you know, Bitcoin on the move. Massive, massive amounts of money. So you can click these websites. You can read about it. And you actually can see the US dollar value. That's $100 million on the move, people. Crazy stuff. All right. So really quick, I wanted to kind of speculate and talk about this as well. So we know that Coinbase... Well-known name, we know them, whether you love them or hate them, they are readying for a public listing getting $77 billion of evaluation from NASDAQ private markets. 
they are looking to expand. It's not just Coinbase, it's Circle, it's every other fintech, and potentially even Ripple like they've discussed. And of course, they're very conservative in their estimates of when they'd be doing an IPO, but we still want to talk about it and be able to speculate in a speculative market, people. Keep in mind, this type of valuation would be greater than ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange Inc., the owner of the New York Stock Exchange, and also, we know they are the parent company of Backed. And what is Backed doing? Well, I'm paying attention to that high level, at least, and trying to keep up with everything. And I'm, you know, my head is spinning over here like an owl. And we literally know that Backed, with all the Bitcoin futures contracts, are looking to potentially even do an IPO as well. So this institutional money, this institutional attention is here. And then I did share a, um, another tweet earlier. Michael Saylor potentially looking to put another billion dollars into Bitcoin. And FYI, if people think it's so impractical, practical, and I'm going to say this again in my next video, for XRP to even just get a quick push short term to one to two dollars in this market, even during the SEC allegations, I don't know what to tell you. I absolutely can entertain that idea, but I can't guarantee it. And I'm also prepared for anything that happens on the bad end and I will accumulate. But you have to remember, Bitcoin is at an all time high. This is the first time that this has ever happened in history. Fifty two thousand dollars. Now, whether you love it or hate it, I actually like Bitcoin for what it brings. I just know it's not going to solve the payments issue like XRP will and already is. Can it be that store of value for the years to come? Absolutely. But personally, as an investor, as a trader, and I'm going to do this video really quick because I want to get back on the charts, my, oper my money and opportunity is going to be in a lot of these other assets in the top probably 100 to 500. Um, no offense to Bitcoin, but it's a lot harder to double my money in Bitcoin now. Um, you know, I wish I just went all in for that matter when we were in March 2020 last year when, when Bitcoin was at like three or four grand, you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda, but I missed it. And I sold the rest of my Bitcoin, what, a few months ago and I showed you guys. I even sent like five Bitcoin like a couple months ago and I'm like, oops, coulda, coulda held those. So it happens. All part of the story, as you know. So keep in mind, we can talk about this, we can speculate about this, and remember, I actually wanted to reference this as well on Twitter, so remember a few years back, Coinbase got the valuation, and so did Ripple, so Coinbase, now they're valued at $77 billion from the private market, Coinbase, or now back in the day, they were valued at $8 billion, this was in 2018, now I thought it was 2018 for Ripple, but this article was actually 2019, so maybe I'm just mixing it up, and keep in mind, 2019, even if it was 2018, Ripple, the company, was valued at $10 billion. What do you think their valuation will be in the future? They've had more partners. They're expanding. If you guys watched the video I did specifically talking about Dubai in that financial center with another 2,000 plus companies, the fintech hub, we know that Ripple conservatively has 300 plus direct customers. But most people just think that and it goes right over their head. Well, why do you think that we have documents that we've shown, and this is proof on a variety of websites, that all of the largest technology providers that you know of, ACI Worldwide, Volante, uh, Finastra, they have, the, out of the top 50 banks, typically all of them, if not maybe just 48 of the top 50 banks, we have thousands of customers. You can talk about Temenos. It's, it's just on and on and on. And th those are thousands of customers. So ideally, you're already looking at 10,000 customers, conservatively speaking. And we only need the top 20% of that following Pareto's law in business with the 80-20 principle. The top 20% of the big players are containing and already doing 80% of the volume. This is why adoption can happen very, very quickly when, in fact, the price begins to move. If you don't believe me, well, go back and look at the history for XRP. And a lot of people watching this channel that have been here for a couple of years know XRP went from under a penny in a very quick time. We did a 70,000% just a few years ago in the year 2017 in a return. Yet, you know, price gets manipulated, it stays, it's low for a couple of years. And everybody forgets that it was a top leading digital asset. Its price, price performance, to say it bluntly, for the past few years has been terrible. And guess what? That's exactly why I'm buying it and most people are not. They're not paying attention to the trends or they run out of patience. So that's just a personal choice, guys. This is not financial advice. As you know, I own still, and it's probably too much now, like 30 plus digital assets. I'm sharing them on Patreon as well. A lot is happening in the space. And provided that you are adequately diversified and provided that you only invest money that you can afford to put in, set and forget for the years ahead, and you know, you're not investing more than you can you know, afford to lose, I think we're really going to have a very, very successful future. So interesting, $10 billion valuation. Curious to see if there's any more of that. I'll be watching Circle as well. 
Something interesting to note before we talk about our next topic, and this was an older article, but still it's relevant, 25% of US households are either unbanked or underbanked. 25%, one fourth in the United States alone, I'm not even talking about you know populations in India or Africa. Crazy. We know we're expanding in areas like Brazil, all good and great. I hope that real-time payments gets to everybody. If you don't have a bank account, well, guess what? You're going to have mobile banking. Everything's going into the cloud. There's going to be new, maybe even more so, maybe not entirely DeFi applications, but hopefully a lot more distributed. So just like even uh, Rath Economist in the XRP community was talking about, wouldn't it be cool if you could just plug in to RippleNet in the future or some type of on-demand liquidity API and leverage peer-to-peer -peer transactions? And of course, we can do that with DeFi now. We can do that with Bitcoin. But I'm just talking on a wide scale adoption, already integrating with some of the big payment providers or platforms like Stripe, like Venmo, like PayPal. And it's happening. July 2020, for the first time in history, U.S. banks, U United States banks, the most conservative country ever that's usually hard with the regulations, allows banks to hold cryptocurrency. You can talk about the Volcker, Volcker rule and hedge funds and what this means and the implications. This is a massive transfer of wealth. If you've not watched that old video that I keep reposting, it's on my Instagram still just a few days ago of Tika Tuari discussing this. Exactly what happened in 1994 and 95 with Netscape, AOL, Microsoft, Dell. History may not repeat, but it freaking rhymes and this is exciting. All right, so right here, guys, on Ripple.com, they did release this, and we can see creating a more or, uh, creating a more financially inclusive and sustainable future, unlocking economic barriers and opportunities for all. There's been 150 million dollars in donations since 2018. 80 plus countries where Ripple NGO partners operate. Notice they quote and say 1.7 billion unbanked. I have read and heard that there's maybe another 1.3 billion. Do not quote me on this. 1.3 billion that are underbanked, maybe not. Entirely unbanked, but maybe only have you know one bank account, or they don't have access to a brick and mortar bank account, so they have a mobile bank account, or maybe they use you know applications, things of that nature. So ideally, to create this internet of value and foster you know economic incentives everywhere, everybody needs you know to have access to technology, of course, and we're seeing that happen every single day. Um, frankly, it does make me upset though when somebody's not able to get food, yet the cell phone company comes in and makes sure they have enough to buy their phone. Um, that's not right to me, but nonetheless, we're seeing this happening, okay? You can look at the partners, of course, whether you love them or hate them. We've talked about Mojo Loop a million times in this channel. We've talked about, keep in mind, they're you know, working with Bill and Melinda Gates as well, whether you think that's good or bad. Ripple works as well. And remember, Mojo Loop, the gentleman that's working with that, um, what is his name? Costa Pedic. He is literally or was one of the primary architects of the entire Swift network. Um, yeah, that's the video that that point alone should just make you, you know, you know, have zero doubt in this ecosystem or at least the future of what this technology DLT specifically can do for the world. Um, let's see. And then a last a couple last things, guys. I know we've been talking about EWT forever Energy Web Foundation. I know everybody's talking about it. Now the price is high. Well, we've been talking about it when it was le like at the lows at like five dollars. We were talking about it before the news of XRP Ledger Foundation teaming up with Energy Web for this whole net zero initiative that are following suit with the World Economic Forum. Um, trends are your friends. You have to pay attention to these and capitalize. I know there are a few other assets that are similar to EWT, um, like what, like Power Ledger and things of this nature. And it's very exciting. Ripple, the company, you know, Cardano, all these other assets that are involved with even the WEF, the World Economic Forum, the 1% of the 1% are aligning their goals and, you know, intelligently thinking how they can incentivize these tier one banks to finally open up this payment system. They're not going down without a fight, but it's happening. I mean, look at Cardano's pumps recently. Do I believe that XRP will have that potential and go, you know, double digit plus? Yes, of course. But... We have to wait, and until then, I will be comfortably waiting, and nothing is guaranteed. Nothing. It could go to zero. So anytime I have some very bullish, hypey quote, please understand that, all right? I'm just human. So keep that in mind. Um, I also wanted to say a big thank you to these two gentlemen. So these are the people that I always see with great altcoins. Of course, we have Polkadot.Pepe, and notice he has EWT. He's had this forever. Um, I always used to just see him tweet and we used to go back and forth. So he's given me some very, very good pack picks in the past. And then also, one of my good buddies, Jamie XRP. Of course, he has great taste in assets right here as well. XRP, EWT, QNT, Link, and Zill. So it's simply a matter of time. So I love following those two guys and always getting good information. Um, wealth and knowledge, guys. Just leveraging other people. 
Um, the second that you act like you know everything, you're going to miss out. And I, I'm talking to myself too there. All right, 30 fo- 35, excuse me, I almost said a bad word. 35 plus universities worldwide focused on accelerating research and developments. On and on and on. You can talk about MIT, Al Grand. Let's see what else I want to show you today. There was a few other interesting things. Also, in other news, Coinbase. The first time I actually used Coinbase in several months to actually buy something. I normally use other asset or uh, other exchanges or brokers because I do not like the fees of Coinbase. They're built for everyday people, but it costs an arm and a leg, and that's just my opinion. Um, they actually have Ethereum 2.0 staking rewards going for a 75% APR. Very, very cool. And just going to show that, you know, they're supporting this ecosystem of proof of stake. I don't believe that proof of work will be largely successful in the future financial system. All the other assets are working on a varieties or some have multiple consensus mechanisms like Digibyte. But it's just very cool to see that, you know, this is happening. We're actually able to earn interest on our crypto assets. And in the future, in our bank account, if you have 100K in your bank, in Bank of America or whoever, and they have negative rates, what are you going to do with that money? It's incentivizing you to get it out because you're paying them. Even if it's a negative 1% rate, you're going to really want to spend it or start planting seeds and make money. Well, digital assets will be right here waiting with their arms open. And this is exciting. So, of course, I prefer to stake not utilizing an exchange, but you can kind of compare the rates and see if you want to go to a wallet or something like that. But nonetheless, very exciting. Coinbase is offering a lot of options for staking your crypto assets. The only trade-off is if you know you need your um you know you need access at all times and they go down, you can't. So you're trusting another party, which is relatively centralized. And for me, um, I'd like to try or at least prefer to, and I have my moments of utilizing you know platforms where I'm in control. All right, when I want my money where I want it. So we talked about this, and now there's just a few other points I wanted to share in this one, and then we're gonna call it a day, guys. Right here. So Algo, Luna, I know we've been talking about these. We've been talking about Luna at least since May of last year when we were at like or, uh, June, July. I have videos on that. You can go back. We were sitting at even like the 20 cent mark. Um, you can go back in my YouTube videos at this time. We were talking about it. I said I bought it. Um, go look at my old tweets. You can probably type in Kevin Cage Luna around that day. We were buying it. Jamie XRP was buying it. All of this. And we are over $7 now from 20 cents. And you know what makes me so mad about this besides that I sold a lot too early? That XRP is not there yet. It's just a complete joke to me. So the longer, you know, the lower the base, the higher in space. Once we bubble up, I, you know, I don't want to come back. And is it possible that we still have a little more manipulation and the settlement lags on? It takes longer than we want. Yes. And that's really my only only concern. Do I believe we're going to get out of this mess once and for all eventually? Yes, absolutely. And that is not financial advice. But something interesting, guys, and I was just charting, and we have Algo on the left, and I added a watermark on the chart so you can see this easier. So I'm going to get back on um, you know, trading view with the people on Patreon right after this video. And we have Luna, both on the weekly, throwing a FIB extension, swing high, swing low from you know obviously that recent high, getting rejected. And we've already retraced over the two, over $1. I, to be honest, you know, I did not believe that. And Algo and Luna are both part of my long-term holds, but I didn't think we were going to break through. And I was just watching Luna and I knew we just kept going, guys. And I was posting this even on Instagram. We broke through the 4.236 extension right here. Crazy. Now, I'd like to, you know, do the whole history of historical data for the FIBs and draw it correctly. But we, I don't really know exactly where. I'd probably have to go to Cointrader.pro and see, you know, more historical data or look at Coin Paprika. Nonetheless, if Luna is in fact ahead of Algorand, does that mean that Algo will go another 100% to that 4.236 extension of even $2.50? The RSI is up, the MACD is moving. Um, we noticed that when the stochastic or the stock RSI just runs right, anything's possible. I'm not saying this will happen, but ideally, I mean, just look at these moving averages, how they just cut up perfectly on this weekly. Um, we've already seen VeChain, ADA, I mean, HBAR, Zillica, these assets have gone parabolic. So what is stopping XRP, Algo, and a variety of other assets? That's my question, because we noticed that XRP was just getting up to what, like this 236 or 382? Can we, I mean, is it feasible to get to $1 to $2? Yes. And if anybody thinks that's moon boyish or hopium-like, that's so silly to me. Bitcoin is at $52,000, and it is 2021. We're not in 2017 anymore. Things can happen quickly when, in fact, they do. So keep that in mind, just to be that little cheerleader for you guys. 
Also, whale alert, just watching another what $1 billion valuation minted here. Um, and keep in mind, some of these are in fact transfers if you do follow whale alert. Just wanted to point that out. And overall, I'm seeing growth. I'm seeing expansion. I'm seeing this final glass ceiling with these SEC allegations being the final thing that we can smash through that hammer with regulatory clarity once and for all. There's not going to be a glass ceiling above XRP price anymore. To speed through this, and we're going to call it a day, Ripple reveals push to expand institutional XRP liquidity in Asia launching a hiring spree for Ripple X as well, which is formerly called Spring, SDK's development on the XRP ledger. We can talk about the NFTs. You can talk about Gala. A lot of exciting things are happening in the space, whether you're focusing on payments, whether you're focusing on um, non-fungible tokens. This is the most exciting space to be. And yes, we've put up with so much crap the past few years. Um, you know, people asking us, hey, how's that crypto thing? How are your investments? You, sh you wouldn't believe how many people are hitting me up now. Um, the past six months, I've probably had 300 people um, that I know or old friends, you know, pop in and start hitting me up and start talking to me again. And, you know, the, the real people that capitalize off this are the ones that are buying before that happens. And yes, we have tremendous upside. The fact that you are in this market in 2021 before 2025 is a very good thing. So be sure to hit that bell icon, guys. Stay tuned. We're going to be covering a variety of digital assets. XRP is my personal favorite in the XRP community. You know, I they're my family, so I'm not turning my back on them. And XRP is still like my biggest holding easily. I'm personally kind of frustrated because I wish it would just skyrocket. But I, I own a lot of digital assets for that matter. All right, and almost done. Right here, we have that new role, managing and expanding XRP liquidity and utility. This is not the sign of a dying digital asset like XNS, like TNT or Tyrion, these assets that are fading away into oblivion. XRP, either, per their quotes from years ago, solves this problem at scale and explodes, or it fades away into oblivion. And I think XRP is going to make a dent in the universe. It was already trialed and already has partnerships and proof of concepts with a lot of the top 40 to top 50 central banks in the world. The black sheep, the best place to hide something, is right in front of your face. Right here. Ripple's vision of an internet of value requires digital asset efficiency as well as a healthy crypto market, healthy liquidity. Remember, was it uh, not Monica Long, was it Brianne Madigan saying even in March 2020, and she said it months before that, it's the sure sign of a healthy and growing market when it, the markets can crash to very low prices and then bounce back up and develop that healthy liquidity and you know get those spreads back that are reasonably healthy. I saw that, and I know in March 2020, everybody's depressed because XRP went to 11 cents, but man, that for me gave me so much confidence so much confidence in the space so yeah i'm just beyond excited so remember you know when you're terrified when there's fud when in doubt zoom out zoom out during pullbacks during anything like that is there something fundamentally wrong with the long-term view of the crypto market that is going to change your mind about this investment if not you might want to relax and sleep on it because I'm telling you, the biggest mistakes that I've made in this space, and I'm sure you guys can relate, I've heard some tragedies that make mine look like nothing. The biggest losses that I've ever had in trading crypto were always when I let my emotions get the best of me when they guided me. But the biggest wins that I've ever had in my entire life, I never thought would be possible for like even monthly returns in crypto. And I mean, now it's a lot easier because we're actually really moving. The biggest wins I've ever had were always without emotion when I was able to set and forget and walk away. Very excited. So robust liquidity is a core component of making that vision a reality. Left and right, you guys can go to the website. Um, of course, boards.greenhouse.io slash Ripple. Look at the job postings of Ripple. Look at the countries that they're expanding in besides California. Look at Brazil. Look at Singapore. Look at Japan. Expanding everywhere. So it's very, very exciting. All right. And last but not least, again, utility scan, utility dash scan. Let's take a look at Fiat Leak. Are we up or down right now? Still around 54 cents. So I hope we get that push. We're seeing so many other assets get that push. EWT is shot. Um, and it's just simply a matter of time. So stay strong, guys. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. And I will catch you in the next video.